Fridays are awesome. Welcome to everyone watching worldwide, including our viewers in Edison and Ringgold, Georgia, who visited CNN Center in the past week. I'm Carl Azus. And now that we've all turned off our Wi-Fi, after hearing about a dark side of technology, we have a report for you about its bright side, one of the amazing ways the new technology of 3D printing is being used to help people. It concerns civil wars in South Sudan, a Central African nation where millions have died or been disfigured during years of conflict. The second civil war in Sudan was one of the largest Africa has ever known. It's a conflict that's displaced about four million people, making massive refugee camps a stark reality. The fallout from the fighting is startling. It has left more than 50,000 amputees in its wake. But in this unlikely place comes a tale of hope, the story of Daniel. Mick Ebeling is the founder of Not Impossible Labs. It's a nonprofit whose main mantras are help one, help many, and technology for the sake of humanity. What is 3D printing of an arm? I mean, for people who've never heard of this, what does that mean? It's like a pastry chef put, writing happy birthday on a cake, squeezing, you know, frosting out of the bottom of the tube, except for every time you write the H, you write on top of it again, and you write on top of it again so that your H just starts to build from the ground up, and so you get a three-dimensional H. And that pastry tube is on a 3D printer is called an extruder, and the frosting is this hard kind of uh, plastic spaghetti that gets spit through the extruder, heated up, and then spit out in whatever shape the, the program is going to do it at. What was it like when you first saw Daniel? Daniel was very recluse. He was churned away. Um, he you know, had his arms and his stumps slightly hidden. So November 11th, 2013, uh, we had been in Yida, we had set up in the NGO's back shed, and it finally comes to a point where we've got everything together. And so Daniel came over and put it on, and I'm just testing kind of the ergonomics and how he was going to position to get his hand up to his mouth. And I was seeing him doing it, and it's, it's actually happening. So we melted a little piece of orthoplastic on it and popped a, a spoon, a tin spoon, into the piece and fed himself for the first time. And it was, I mean, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've had in my life. Everybody, this is a crowd kind of gathered around watching it, and everybody was equally as blown away. Yes. Days after Daniel received his own arms, he began to print arms for other amputees. I think the, the brilliant thing about the, just the human mind is that the more you do something, the more you tweak it, and the more you see how you can change it. When I go back, the arm will be way better than the arm that I taught them how to build. And that, that kind of progress is just so exciting. 